Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Jared Glant. This is the Cardone Zone, and every Thursday at noon East Coast Standard Time, I'm here bringing young hustlers, the place where you come to get your hustle strong, the place where you come to get tips and strategies to get you further, faster, and I got a great show today. Um, I, I'm, I'm active on Instagram, my Instagram all the time. Like I, I, I probably answer, I even go into the other folder to the other folder to answer messages and questions that people had. And um, people are asking a lot about rejection right now. They're like, oh man, I lost this deal. Uh, you know, I couldn't get this job. You know, I'm struggling at work. And, and so I'm, I've been getting a lot of questions about rejection. So if you have questions about rejection and how to handle it, I want you to call into the show today, 305-865-8668, 305-865-8668. We're talking about rejection, the R word. There's this movie, this old school movie. I don't know if you guys know this movie, but it's called Ski Patrol. Have you seen this? No. Dude, this movie came out, this movie came out, uh, it must have been in the late 80s or something. Is that for kids? No, it's not for kids. It's, it's a hilarious movie, it's a comedy. Um, and he talks about, you know, the R word. And he's this got this high-pitched, annoying voice, and he's like, it's re I'm gonna say it, it's the R word, responsibility. And uh, if you guys Google it, that, that'll, be, that'll be funny for you. But the R word that we're talking about today is rejection. Rejection is an inevitable part of life. It's a part of business. It's a part of relationships. It's a part of everything that you will do. Rejection takes place in every single day of your life. Uh, you go to put your blinker on and somebody don't let you in. Boom, rejected. Uh, you go up to the guy or girl, boom, rejected. Uh, you go up to buy a, a donut, boom, sold out, rejected, because they, they sold out their donuts. You try to get your ticket to uh, boot camp, boom, rejected. Uh, growth con, boom, rejected. Trying to get the big deal, boom, rejected. So like rejection just happens all day, every day, and some people have a major problem with it, and I did too. And the thing about rejection is People attach an emotional response to this. And that's where you really get into trouble with rejection in the first place because rejection is just a part of being on planet Earth. And anybody who has a problem with rejection uh, that can't work through it is gonna end up having a hard go in life. And if you wanna achieve massive levels of success, then you have to be willing to accept more rejection and more failure. And your ability to run into situations where you could face rejection will determine how far and how fast that you go. So I got three ways to handle rejection, three things that you can do to help you move through rejection. And I'm telling you this from personal experience. Uh, this isn't stuff that uh, I made up. This isn't stuff that uh, I think could work. I literally remember when I started with Grant, and I had just gotten my kind of my first job cold calling. And uh, I, you know, I told him I cold called before in person, but um, I never done it on the phone before. So this was a new thing for me. And, and on the phone, you face a lot of rejection because it's much easier for people to just click and hang up the phone. Uh, although it does burn when you're face to face, but needless to say, uh, I had to work through this and, and I knew that that where I was gonna go with Grant was gonna be dependent on really like how, how, how I was able to, to, to go into situations where I knew I could fail, I knew I could lose, and that I ultimately could have a little bit of emotional pain attached to the rejection of not getting what I wanted. So the very first thing that I did is I was trying to work through this on my own. The first thing that I did was I identified that this was a problem for me. I was like, rejection is a problem for me. And so, you know, they say that, you know, hey, the first thing you have to do is admit you have a problem. Admit you got the problem. You know it's a problem, and if it ain't a problem, good for you. But for a lot of people, it is the problem. Rejection is the problem, and it doesn't feel good. So I wanna teach you how to get through it. Number one, the first thing that I did, the very first thing that I did when I was like, this is a problem, I need to handle it. Okay, are you guys to that point yet? Are you there yet where you're like, I'm ready to handle this problem for good and forever? What, what do you think your, your, your production would be like if you never worried about rejection? What do you think your sales would be like, your income would be like, your courage would be like if you never, ever, ever had to worry about rejection? 
If you could just wipe that off your list of considerations, do you think you'd be in a better spot? Of course you would, right? So here are three things you can do. Number one, the first thing that you have to do, and this is gonna freaking twist you up, you gotta get more rejection. This is like step one, and, and most people can't even make this shift. You actually have to make, you have to get more rejection, right? To the degree that you actually need to make getting rejected a target. Like, like you have to go into a call like, man, I'm gonna get rejected so hard on this one. Like you gotta shift the way that you think about it. You know, you get, people, people make, make 150 calls a day, 200 calls a day, and they're like, man, I might, I might have like five good conversations. Right? So 95% or better of the time, guess what? You're losing, okay? What about if we were celebrating the 95%? What if, what if you were like, you switched it, you're like, I'm gonna get these five conversations out of the 200 calls, I know I'm gonna get that, just by the sheer numbers of, of everything. Now again, the rules change once you get better and you improve your skill, like then, then we're not looking for rejection once you get rejection off of your list of considerations. This is just in the beginning, okay? So five conversations was your target. We're gonna go for 195 rejections out of the 200 calls. This is gonna be your new target. I wanna get rejected so hard on these 195 calls. You have to shift the way that you think about it so that it actually becomes something that you're welcoming and looking forward to. What this does is it starts desensitizing you to that feeling of rejection, right? And, and this, this uh, in the beginning is, is vital because it will allow you to work through the idea that rejection is an emotional response to something that is not intended to be emotional. Like when I tell somebody no, like I have no ill will towards that person. Somebody calls up, they say, hey, I wanna to try to sell you something. Thanks man, just not my thing, not my time, appreciate the call, click. Like I literally, my day does not change. There's no blip on my radar of emotions. It's like, oh man, I wanna make this person feel bad. But yet that's how so many people take rejection. They take it personally. Rejection is a emotional response to life. And so what you have to do is you have to figure out how to like squash down the emotional attachment you have to this thing called rejection. So you have to actually make the R word the target. If you can just do this one thing, if you can make rejection a target in your day and like the bigger and the nastier and the more painful the rejection, the better. If you could actually make that a target, it will, it, will, it will inspire you because you're actually hitting a target. You'll get to celebrate 195 times a day rather than just five. So this is like a weird little shift trick that I did to work through this. So step number one is you've gotta get more rejection. You have to make rejection a target. Grant has a program called The Rules of Success. This was a program that uh, when I first started working for Grant, was uh, magic for me because it had 12, 12 or 14 uh, discs or programs or messages on it. And it was basically, they were like these little 12 minute audio clips and they all handled kind of big conceptual things like you know show up, you know the 100% philosophy, go for failure. The go for failure one was actually the one that this is based off of because you just, you have to make failure the target and you've got to get good with it so that you eliminate the emotional response to it. Great program, by the way, if you haven't uh, ever heard that program before, look it up in our store. If you're on Cardone University as a corporate customer, you have it in uh, the Grant Cardone Exclusives, one of my favorite programs that Grant's ever created. Uh, so number one is you've got to make rejection a target. Number two, this is, this is step two. So if you can master step one, step two is gonna make it, it's gonna like squash that, 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 that emotion that bitchiness that comes in you like all oh, it's just gonna push it right down 
number two is pipeline anytime you ever feel rejection it's because you have a small pipeline it's like if you had a billion dollars if you had a billion dollars and you lost 50,000 on a bet or on an investment would you would you feel like massive rejection would it ruin your day dude uh, it this is like 50 thousand out of a billion dollars is like barely register like on the radar like it's it's no money it would be like if you lost a nickel and you had a thousand dollars in your pocket I think that might that math might be right if you had a thousand dollars in your pocket and you lost a nickel like you wouldn't even feel it okay so pipeline is the key like if you had if you had um like let's say you had your pipeline let's just call it one two three and four and four is like you're on the goal line if you have zero here and you have two here and you have 10 here and you have uh 200 here and you're like my paycheck depends on this guy right here moving to the goal line and becoming a done deal when you lose both those two deals because the manager or the decision maker at one of the companies that you're working with gets fired and then uh, the other company you were pitching ended up going with somebody else and now you have a zero here dude that hurts because you had so much that you were relying on for so few opportunities Think about this, if you had 100 people here, and you had uh, 500 here, and you had 2,000 here, and one of these deals fell out, or two of them fell out, or five of them fell out, would you feel the same pain? Of course not, because you have more in the pipe. So, so these are two, two very simple things. I've got, I've got one more that I want to discuss, but these are two very simple, practical things that you could literally do. You could do the first one, like starting now. You could do the second one, uh, starting now. It, it'll just take some time to build your pipeline up, but, but getting opportunities. And this is a product of action. Pipeline is a product of action. So, so I remember, I remember when I was getting started with Grant and I had no pipeline, I was having the, the rejection problem until I finally was like, okay, flip your head around on this, uh, start having rejection as the target, see how bad you can get rejected, see how hard you can get crushed in a call. Could you get crushed so hard that you have to hang up on yourself? I remember a call I got, I hung up on myself. I was like, dude, that was terrible. I just got, I just got smoked and I hung up and when I hung up, I laughed because I knew that I was doing the thing that I needed to do, which was get myself accustomed to that situation. You know, the first time you do anything, you're so uncertain and there's so many emotions and feeling run around. If I had to jump into a boxing ring with a boxer, I would feel so nervous. I'd be like, uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather, we're in the ring together. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna get smoked right now. Like I'd be all nervous and, and falling back and like running away from him probably. Like I'd be doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But if I was a seasoned fighter and I had been in the ring before, all of that goes away because I've got experience. I've, I've done it so many times. And so that's why you actually have to make rejection a target. Then, and, that, and that's what I did. I made rejection a target. Then what I had to do was I had to build a pipeline up. So now that rejection became the target, I started not experiencing the feeling more and I started settling down on my sales calls. And once I started settling down in my sales calls, I started getting better on the call. I started sounding more confident on the call. I wasn't running away. I wasn't on defense in the call. I was on offense in the call and I could push. And as a result of that, my pipeline started to grow because I started getting more people in step one, following up with them, getting them into step two, being really good at step two so that I could move them into step three, get a contract out to them, and then ultimately get a deal from them. So, so my ability to deal with the rejection 
and make that a target in step one ultimately led to me being able to build a big pipeline. I remember when I had like literally, I was like, I would get a deal in, one deal, and, and like two hours of my day were just blown because I'd get the deal in and I, I like wouldn't know what to do with it. Like I was like, okay, I've got to, you know, we got to do that, like, and, and just go total scatterbrain basket case because I was like, oh my gosh, I finally got a deal. And you can tell new salespeople, if you're, if you're in an office and you have a new salesperson, just watch this happen to them. Like the first five deals they get, six deals, seven deals, they don't know what to do. They're like, it worked. Like I actually got a deal. What do I do? And they're asking you a bunch of questions about it and like they're freaking out because they actually got a deal. You move into Mike Bonnet mode or Steve Spray mode or Dave Robards mode or Jared K mode or Joe Munizaga mode. Like, like our guys that have been around and that are doing a ton of deals, Brian Rand mode, Mike Schilm. Like we got all these guys. It's so, I'm so proud of the whole team. These guys are just cranking right now. A lot of people are doing a lot of deals here, so it's great to see. But, but the whole vibe changes because now this is just the routine. It's just the thing that they do. And now that one deal doesn't, that they had every, that they, that they were banking on to come in, when that deal doesn't come through, their whole month isn't blown, right? Like, like they, they, they've got, they've done enough deals where they've got a 20K a month residual. Like that one deal that they lose, the reason they get pissed is because they lost, not because of the money. They want to win. So, so like everything starts changing, number one, once you're able to eliminate the response, uh, the emotional response to rejection, because you've made it a target. So now you've kind of suppressed the emotion attached to it. And then you moved, so that's the emotional. Then you have the actual tactical, which is let's just build a big fat pipeline so that I have so many opportunities that are ready to just ink, sign the deal back, get started, that, that now I'm like, if, I, if one deal doesn't show or a demo, uh, doesn't show up or whatever, like it doesn't change my day at all. It doesn't uh, affect me. Uh, so, so, so those are two extremely important things. And then number three, this is the one you build at over time. To handle rejection, just get great. Get better at what you do. The more you win, the less you lose, the better you feel. Like. You just have to get great. That's why you got to train every day on Cardone University. If you guys aren't on Cardone University right now, I mean, I don't know what you're waiting for. Uh, we used to sell this program a year ago. It sold for $10,000. And right now you can get Cardone U at CardoneU.com for $97 a month. You can get access to the full program. We've got a full Facebook community that you can engage and network and connect with people on. You can ask questions to the community. You can get connected with people in your city, in your state, in your industry or space that you can start networking with. Everybody's talking about getting sections together now at the 10X Growth Conference, which is coming up in February. So, so there's all these cool things that are happening because all of these people that have made the commitment to get great have come into one area to support each other. Because greatness, like that, that road is very narrow. There's not a whole lot of people on that road that wanna be great at what they do. In your office, in your environment, there's not a lot of people that wanna do extremely well. And so you have to know, like, if you're one of the few who have that as a major target, then you need to start surrounding yourself with people who support that. And you're not going to always find them in your company. You're not going to always find them in your home. You're not going to always find them in your town or your state. And that's why that Cardone U Connect group that we have that you get access to absolutely free when you become a member at Cardone University. That's why it's so important is because it gives you the ability to build that, connect, that connection and community and camaraderie with people who are all on the same path, who want to get great at what they do. So you've got to get in the program and you've got to train every day. You know, if you want to get great, what's your plan? If you're not on Cardone you, what's your plan? Like you can't, you can't get great without a plan. Like you, 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 if you're like, hey, I'm gonna be the best at what I do, but then you don't change anything and nothing, nothing really happens, like you're not gonna get great, you're gonna get stuck. Like when you make a commitment to, to doing something, you have to start moving in the direction of that. You don't have to cover all the, the ground in one step, but you have to move in the direction. And it won't happen overnight. So you just have to start, you're like, okay, hey, am I gonna be average or am I gonna be great? 
too many people go, hey, I want to be great. And then a week goes by, they're like, nah, maybe not. Maybe I'll just stick with this because it's comfortable. Once you make the decision to go down that road, great from where you're at right now could seem like it's a destination that's really far away, like miles and miles and miles away. But all you have to do is just get started and just take a step in that direction. And what will happen is if you can build the discipline to just continue to take one step, then what's going to happen is you're going to look back and you're going to be so far down the road to greatness, the discipline will be built in, the habits will be there, and then you'll start building a lot of momentum and you'll get towards the target faster. So, so making the decision to get great is really where this like rejection doesn't even become a part of the equation anymore. It becomes something that's accepted. You know what happens, but it doesn't affect you anymore. So like, I still get rejected today. People still say no to me today. Same thing happens to Grant. He loses deals, whatever. But the, 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 the response changes because you've built up this, uh, this muscle to, to, to understand what it is and how you should not let it affect you. So uh, is this all making sense? Oh, yeah. Like these are, these are like literally just things that I've laid out in my own life. So I hope you guys are able to, to, to get something from it. We got some callers, Natalie? Yeah. Mike, Michael Smith from LA. Thanks for calling, bro. Hi, thank you. How Welcome. You doing? I just want to say um, thank you guys to the Young Hustlers and Grant Cardone team for all the, the more and the motivation I get. I, I love filling my head with this sales content. I got the, the notification bell on, and whenever it rings, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear it. So, so thank you. I love that, man. What's your question? So um, my question is, is, is how do you handle rejection before you've gotten a chance to actually build value and, and solve the problem. Right now, I'm setting up appointments, doing solar door-to-door, -door, and um, a lot of times before I've actually got a chance to, to build the value and create any urgency, I'm getting dealt with rejection, and, and, and what's the best way to handle that so I can kind of like take control and build urgency and create a problem because this, this, I, without without creating like a problem, there's no um, there's no like way, really good way. Yeah. To, so know, so the thing that the thing is, that you're yeah. talking about really what what um, what you're talking about in that call is how do you just get some? How do you even get to like step two of the conversation where you say, Hey, my name's Jared. I'm calling from the solar company. And before you can even get anything else out there saying, I'm not interested. I'm not interested. Don't call me back. Lose my number. Go jump off a bridge. That, that like, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're going door to door, but same thing. Oh, you're going door to door. Okay, perfect. So the, the, what you need to work on is you need to work on taking control back. So when you get into your spiel, number one, if it sounds super scripted, people are always going to have, particularly in person, uh, people are always going to have a back off to that because they feel like it's not personal, you're not connected with them, you're actually not communicating with them, your mouth is moving, but you're not having communication. Communication is two-way, and it doesn't always have to be people talking back and forth. It could be the way that you're communicating, the way they're receiving it, and what their body is doing to communicate back to you. So, so what you need to figure out how to do is take control back because when you start going into your greeting or your opening and they stop you and they're going to say, I'm not interested, they have taken away control of that cycle. And so like one of the things that Mike Bonnet used to do all the time because he's doing this over the phone so he doesn't have presence in front of somebody to, to fall back on. But you actually need to yeah. lean into the to the to the conversation. Yeah, ah, 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 I, I'm with you. <laughs> like, dude, you should hear Mike Bonnet on these phone calls. I, I get it. I, John, John, John. Before you hang up, John. Before you hang up, like, <laughs> like he goes all in to like his. He starts the call very paced. Hey, this is Mike Bonnet. I'm calling from Grant Cardone's office. Uh, you know, we help companies go from here to there in this period of time, you know, to be sure, hey, you know what, Mike, thanks so much. I'm not interested. John, 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 before you hang up, like he takes back control. He jumps back into the call before they hang up, before they shut the door. So you have to go from here, like I'm, I'm, I'm entering the call, I'm, I'm, uh, my cadence or my speech or the pace of my communication is calm, it's smooth, 
But when you have to get control back, you got to get bigger in the conversation. So, so without being intimidating, always smile, right? Uh, so my okay. advice to you would just be figure out a, like you would have two, two steps or two levels of communication. Level one would be if the appointment or the sales call or whatever is going as expected. Level two is where you go when somebody is bringing a little bit of confrontation because they're trying to get out of the conversation. Just lean up and get bigger into the call. So that'll help you. It helped me. I know Mike Bonnet does it all the time. Uh, so uh, appreciate your call. Awesome. Who we got next? All right, you got Blake in South Carolina. Blake. From South Carolina, thank you for the call. Did that are we good? What was that? Sound like aliens? Yeah, right. Joey in Michigan. Joey, Michigan. What's going on, bro? Hey, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. Appreciate the call. Absolutely. What? And a qu question for you. Go ahead. I know the subject is rejection, so. Uh, how, how would you say is the absolute best way for someone that's new to sales to take all the rejection and stay positive to the point where they don't throw in the towel too quick? Uh, and how did you deal with it? Yeah, so perfect. Great question. I'm just going to refer back to step one that I talked about today. Step number one is get more rejection. If you can take a new person and you could say your job's to make 200 calls a day, your job's to knock on 50 doors a day or 100 doors a day, your job is to talk to 50 customers a day, whatever the target is. And, and you're, you need to get rejected on 90% of them. So rather than saying, hey, you need to win every call, which is impossible, Rather than saying you need to win every call and they lose 95% of the time, get them to focus on the rejection as a target. Look, we need you to get you out of, out of 100 conversations, you're going to have 5 or 10 or whatever that go the way that you want. But in order to get those 5 or 10, you've got to get rejected probably 90 times. So if you can keep track of your rejections, if you can count your rejection, if you could actually shoot for the rejection, uh, then then you'll hit those five or 10 faster. So it's really just kind of a weird flip on, on the, way that you, the way that you have your people look at it. If, if, so so you, instead of having rejection as an indication of failure, rejection would become an indication of winning and getting closer to the target. Okay. That's awesome. So get more, dude, like, like if it's for you, if it's for somebody that works with you, whatever, make it the target. Like, like no matter how new you are, like just make it the target. Like get it in your head. Hey, I'm going to go get rejected so hard right now. I can't wait to make this call. Let's see how bad it can be. This, 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 yeah. whole, this, whole, this whole process, this whole step one, because some people are probably like, dude, that's stupid. This whole process of get more, make it the target for anybody, like for this to last longer than 30 days, like if you can't handle the rejection and you fully leaned into this for 30 days, then you probably have some other issues going on because I did this for probably two weeks and it changed, it changed everything for me. Okay, that's awesome. Make it the target, bro. Perfect. Cool. Thank All right, you man. Very thanks, much, thanks for the call. Hey, are you coming to our boot camp? No, I'm actually coming to the Growth Con in Vegas. Oh, uh, you got your ticket already? Not yet. Me and a uh, me and a uh, buddy from Lansing here are gonna team up, and we're coming out. Are you, you for sure? Are you for sure coming? Oh yeah. How come you hadn't got your ticket yet? I'm I'm waiting for my buddy. <laughs> You're waiting for your buddy. <laughs> That's right. Are oh, you yeah. gonna? He, he's coming with me. What happens getting, if he? Uh, what happens if he doesn't go? Are you still gonna come? I'm still gonna come. Yeah. Yep. Dude, why don't I get you set up with Natalie right here uh, on the phone? She'll pick it up. She's gonna offer you a stupid deal right now, but you got to take it today. Dumb. That sounds like a good deal. Dumb. Stupid deal. Don't call back tomorrow for it. Natalie, take care of you. Appreciate the call, man. See you in Vegas. Uh. Look, like I know rejection's a big thing because people ask me about it all the time. If you simply, number one, 
make getting rejection a target. Number two, once you've worked through the emotion of that, you make building a massive pipeline your next target. By the time you get through all that, now you can actually focus on getting great at what you do. So very simple. This is not complicated. This is not, uh, I got to go to a psychiatrist. I got to get, you know, uh, I got to uh, go to a, a conference and, and jump around and, and, you know, whatever. This is very simple. Number one, make it the target. Number two, build a pipeline. Number three, doing those things will make you better at what you do. It will allow you to get great. Anybody else? Cool. So we have a uh, growth con coming up. We have a boot camp coming up. Our October boot camp is like one of the most popular uh, events that we put on for people who want to spend three days and really like dig deep into their business and go through a, a massive workbook and talk about finances and marketing and sales and advertising and branding and uh, scaling and execution and leadership and recruiting and hiring. We basically bring our entire team and just tell you how we do business. And we open it up, open the books for three days. Brandon Dawson from Cardone Ventures speaks. Frank Kern from Cardone Kern speaks. Of course, Grant speaks. I speak. Sherry, our COO, speaks. Todd Straw, our director of sales, speaks. So we all basically just say, hey, this is how we, own, we run and operate our business, the same business that went from three million to about 150 million over the last seven years. So pretty massive um, success cycle there. So love to have you there. For anybody that's on the show right now, uh, I'm gonna have, if you call, how should they call you? Just ask for Natalie. Just call the office and ask for Natalie. 310-777-0255, 310-777-0255. She's gonna give you a $500 credit for your boot camp ticket. Uh, if you'd like to have an executive growth con ticket when you buy your ticket, we could do that too. So uh, 310-777-0255, call for Natalie. She'll get you set up. Remember, rejection is the key to your success. Rejection is the target. Rejection's a great thing, but it's not an emotional thing. So go get you some more of it. And while you're at it, like and share and subscribe and comment. And do everything possible you can to support this show so that other people out there trying to get to hustle strong like you can receive the message. We'll see you back next week. And remember, the only people who condemn the hustle are the ones who've already given up on the hustle themselves. If you're going to gamble, you better do it on a sure thing. Whether you're looking for the diamond, executive, VIP, or premier experience, hotel accommodations are limited, so you better place your bets fast and get ready for what is truly going to be an extraordinary experience. The 10X Growth Conference 2020 in Las Vegas. Reserve your seats while they last. If you're going to gamble, you better do it on a sure thing. Whether you're looking for the diamond, executive, VIP, or premier experience, hotel accommodations are limited, so you better place your bets fast and get ready for what is truly going.